Well, it's welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show or not. We won't be seeing much use of big boys like this. It's lockdown time. I'm going to be doing lockdown jobs. Ooh, driving me crazy. So many jobs. My goodness me, it's just like none ending, isn't it? But motivation is the key to fighting this virus. You've got to keep at it. You've got to think positive. Keep positive out there. Anyway, this might pass 30 minutes of you. It's just me doing my stuff in my own house. I do wish I could use this though. Ah, here we are again, guys. Back in the garden. I've got, these were given away free by somebody. They're called Market More. Not the company, just the make, I think it is. Or the brand, not the brand, the, um, the name of the cucumber. Here are some seeds to grow cucumber. In this packet, you'll have three. Bit tight, isn't it? But they are free. Three free cucumber seeds. I'm going to put them in one of the pots, but you've got one in each, see if I can grow these on and then plant them out. And I've grown before, after pumpkins, melons, all that sort of thing, squash. Try growing everything. Some grow, some don't in our climate because we have a wet climate normally. You wouldn't know it, which you wouldn't know it. Look at the fishing weather that we're missing, guys, with this lockdown. I'm off to get my sunglasses in a minute. It's that bright today. I'm going to plant these three, see if anything comes of them. I'm going to get a hammer, which would be nice and enjoyable to break this uh, old clay, broken clay pot up there. I'm going to break that all up for crocking elsewhere. Um, tidy up here, clean the rest of my pots up, have a sweet through. I've got my potatoes in there, so fingers crossed in a little while, well, not a little while, not sort of 15 minutes, we'll have something growing there. And I've just got to keep my geraniums in there, damp now because it gets very hot in that greenhouse. I might actually go and have a cook up in the tackle shack. Not sure what to do. I've got a bit of tackle I can talk about as well. So, still on lockdown. Thank goodness the weather's good. And, well, what else can we do? So, stick. Um, so, I put them under there. And I've got some that I put down lower as well to reduce the temperature. And I gradually put them out to harden them off. I'm just waiting. A few weeds there. I'm just waiting for the first signs of a few buds there. If there's any chance of budding, these will then be three years old. Oh, there we go. Wow, that's come up in the last two days. I haven't been in here. See it? So I'm going to put this one. That one could almost be planted, not planted out, put out for hardening off. One, two, three buds. Wow, I'm really pleased. That was a three-year-old cutting, folks. I put some in what I call the potting shed here. God, we've had some, look at this right, that's pretty, isn't it, look. Amazing strength in cobwebs. Um, they're just starting to shoot here. Microphone just, and he's done some seeds as well, they're starting to shoot. You don't want them to dry out too much, so it's not as hot in here. Now look, they're doing, I feel these are doing better in slightly cooler temperatures. Just looking, there's the first sign of some buds, I think, coming through. Just get the dead bits off there. Keep them nice and damp, they're drying out. And what you can do is just turn them at an angle or turn the leaves around. I've got something growing here. Do you know what? I don't even know what they are. These, some of these are beans. We'll definitely see those come out. I've got cosmos seeds. I think they might be here. I'm going to keep these damp. And uh, what I do, you can see how they curve around. These will be tomatoes, I should think, because I've got a tomato packet there. When they curve over like that and you get two leaves at the top there, I turn them around the other way, so that makes them go back this way, and then I turn them around again. So you just keep doing this, so you go backwards and forwards, so it stops them going all stalky. Look, it's just my way. What do I know? I'm just a regular Joe Average gardener. I turn stuff around like this. These can actually go in here, I feel. Just out of that sun, because tomorrow, I've now done this, it will make it, I don't know what the Nutella, oh, the Nutella's, they put Nutella in the mouse traps. That's what they reckon. Okay, so these can go here. A little bit of water wouldn't go in there. So that is my potting shed. As people see what's in there, Graham. Junk, old bird feeders. Who knows what this is? This pushes down for, and you twist and cuts out and it makes holes for planting bulbs, like daffodils and stuff, like bulbs. Bulbs. And it's got a squeezy bit at the top, I can't remember what it does. Pinches together like that. Goes in like this and you pinch it together. An antique sieve. These are called trugs, another sieve. Again, dibbing, look, they're sawing off handles, aren't they? But I use them for making holes, so you can put small potatoes if you have sea potatoes. 
a lawn sprinkler which never gets used because we're on a meter. These are dead handy, these are gloves for picking up leaves like this. They're really, really handy. Now, obviously that's a, a winter job. We have tons of leaves. Spare bamboo canes. I'll just chuck this in out of the way. Mike's got his old tools in there. Now I'm going to show you. Oh, rat trap's been tripped there. Let's show you these bits in here. This has all got to come out. Get, look how it's going mouldy, folks. Look. But when Mike's bushcraft stuff's in here, these are antique ones. That's an antique splitting wedge for splitting timber apart. Weighs a ton. It's probably a hundred years old. They want actually oily. The original old bracing bit there, which we've used on our films. Very, very old uh, drill bits there. Cutting out holes. This one's unusual. I bought all these because that one is adjustable. You can undo this screw here and slide this outside cutter into it. You can make it narrower or wider. That's about as wide as it could go there. So that's something different, but I've got to get those cleaned up as well. So yet another job. This needs to go back in my uh, tackle store. I think I got it. I got it wet at one stage and put it in there to dry. Hence all the mould. This. This is all bits of plastic and rubbish curtain and like floss stuff we put over when we get winter and we want to put it over the plants to try and save some of the plants. Black weed blind, that's got to come out as well today. Wifey wants that for hose piping, that's another job. You don't realise, and obviously being Graham, there's a spare hose pipe and there's a spare hose and there's a spare hose and there's a spare hose. Oh and there's a spare watering can and a spare watering can and a spare watering can. And some more spare wee blind. Sad, isn't it? I just don't, it's a Second World War thing, I'm sure. So there you are. You've had a good old look around my potting shed. Don't do much potting in there anymore. I do now because I'm finding the time to do it. Okay, here's the uh, cucumber seeds. They are very, very small. I don't know if, look, they're free. I'm not even sure they're in there. There they are. Three cucumber seeds. Gonna plant those. If they come up, great. If they don't, they don't. This is all I do with them. Now I'm gonna put them in the potting shed, that's a spare. I'm gonna put them in the potting shed. I better put that round there because otherwise I'm going to be eating cosmos plants, aren't I? Thinking they're cucumbers. And we'll get those soaked because that is very dry soil there, very dry. And uh, nice and damp. Hopefully they germinate and uh, we'll just see if anything comes up. Sort of tempting to actually nearly put these out, but you can, you can very easily get caught, folks. Some spare seeds and spare beans in there. You can very easily get caught out. There is an old saying, don't cast a clout until May is out. Uh, I know it means don't plant your bedding plants and stuff out like that because they could get eaten, but what's a clout? Who knows what a clout is? Is it a clod of turf? Anyway, let's get these guys watered. I think I'm going to dig these up and split these today. I might even show you guys a bit of underwater stuff with some bait. That blanket weed's coming back. If you watch one of my films, I cleared the blanket weed out. Look at it. Look, it just cannot leave us alone in this bright weather. One needs a real good soak. It will run out and run all over the floor and the table. It doesn't matter. They need to be damp, otherwise they're not going to germinate. Three seeds. It would be nice if I got one cucumber plant out of three. I'm really soaking these, as you can see, and it will all run down and give these guys... That's, a, that's the trouble I find with peat. It dries out really, really quickly. You've got to get the balance right when you get the first. Once seedlings get to about here, you can transplant them into smaller pots. Those would be about 10 days away from being planted, I would guess. I do like geraniums if you get nice colours. So give them a little bit more. Here we go. Another plant to be plant pot to be broken up for crocking. 
clay is about the best what they call crock in the bottom of plant pots you can get so I'm not wasting anything here well two things this actually is recycling so nothing's wasted <laughs> it is also fun uh, yes of course uh, wear gloves wear face mask wear uh, special glasses wear breathing apparatus whatever the health and safety is you know someone's going to be on your case this is what this is what I'm doing on my property with my pots. Wear clean underpants. Yes, yes, yes. It's all common sense. This is a man who has many, many black thumbs. Over the years. I now have enough crock material to last me about two years. All I do is put it in one other, either a bag or somewhere or another big giant pot and you just tap into it when you want it. Oh yeah, here's, take the head cam off. These are lavateras. Is that a creature? These are lavateras. They grow, I've grown these from cuttings about that big, about that big. These are three years old now. They have a be beautiful flower comes out in about June. These are silver sultans, right? The original plants belong to my mum. That would be, she died back in 2002. So these have been reseeding. They seed themselves each year. And they throw up a plant here with a sort of delicate white or blue flower, two different types. I just call them silver sultans. And weeds, got to be weeded. And there. Now there's an interesting thing. That's one of the ladybirds, okay? Now is that a natural UK ladybird or is that one of the deadly ones that's eaten all the other ladybirds? Which one is that, people? There he is. Is that the invasive species? or not. I don't know myself, to be honest, it's a ladybird. They will come out this time of year, but gardening people, entomologists or ladybirditis people, tell us, is that the invasive one or is that, our, I'm gonna call it a UK one. Put him back there, because I do believe they eat aphids, aphids that damage everything else. So these were self-seeded and I pulled them up from there as tiny little, tiny little shoots like this last year. They didn't grow in flower last year, but I'm pretty sure if I keep them wet here, south facing as you can see, if I keep these soaked, I think these do really well this year. Anyway, hopefully we'll all be here and I can show it to you. I've got some leftover um, bulb pots here. You can see they all come up blind, the daffs. I'm gonna dump those few there, keep the soil and keep these larger pots and if I do get some runner beans coming up because I don't want to dig up my lawn to plant stuff you know but it'd be nice to grow something um, keep me occupied as well so they're going to be cleared out and I'm going to tidy all this up this carpet I put so if the wife comes around who's got a dodgy leg a dodgy knee doesn't trip on all this old pallet wood well, this was clay that I had a massive area of clay when I had the house uh, the back end of the house all built and I built this platform here and that's why I put the greenhouse potting shed there. But the wind blasts down here, so um, I've got to just tack this down each end, so hopefully we don't catch our feet on it. Again, 
We're going to come in for some lunch. It is absolutely a gobsmacking, fabulous day. Shark fishing, trout fishing, anything you want fishing. That's not so good for beach fishing. We're going to get the old G-Sto going, have a bit of lunch. Right, so we've got lighter, paper, wood. Looking good, just open up here. A little bit. And away it goes. What a machine. Yeah, that's going. Okay, what are we eating? We've got hot and spicy prawns. Food worth celebrating king prawns. Coated in crispy chilli and pepper breadcrumbs. Cooked from frozen and I'm going to, but I'm starting with some soup. That's what the kettle's on there for. And the soup gram is minestrone with a sprinkling of black pepper. Don't forget the sweet chilli sauce. Well, I suppose at least I'm sort of relaxing. I'd sooner be relaxing with a fishing rod to be honest, but it's the way it is, just another day. You have to take each day as it comes, don't you have to take each I can't get my head right. I don't know what day it is most of the time. Sometimes I don't know what time it is. Not unusual for somebody my age, but it's just a, the most bizarre, worrying time for the whole human race. I've just seen a massive shadow go over. There's a, a kestrel going across there and a massive shadow went across like a pterodactyl, like an aeroplane on the grass there. I've put some old bits of chicken out I reckon the wife was the figure with the wife of somebody then she's gone in and big Collins coming down. Circulating up there somewhere. Windy, pretty windy today. Beautiful blue sky. I'm just so pleased I've got the old tackle shack here. Cozy in the winter, warm if not hot in the summer. Pointing's holding up there. The old chairs from the dump that I did, those of you who follow us, they're holding up nicely. And the kettle is about ready, I feel. I have to go and get a bit of tin foil for these, otherwise they're just gonna drip all over, over the grid in the oven. If I can make this a long, narrow parcel, it'll go in, hopefully, he says. Right, another experiment. Another parcel like this, and then the oven's off the scale, but still, you only have to have it open for a little while. To... I'll tell you what, it'd be great when I come to get them out. So, yeah, all the way back to the house again to get the little trolls. Soup is on the go. I'm impressed with how my table's holding up and my chair over the back made out of pallet wood. If anybody wants anything to pass the time, just go and look at our totally awesome fishing pallet wood jobs. We've got cabins, shelves, chairs, tables, bookshelves, plinths for your flower plants, fencing, one of the biggest hitters on YouTube, and the fencing I think is over 800,000 views. Pallet wood, all free, all the sort of thing you can do now in the lockdown. Did I remember what time I put those prawns in? Does anybody got Smith? Smith, what time did I put those prawns in? Finish your homework first. So lucky to have this tackle shack, which was originally, years ago, where Mike Nibbles was Mike's surf shack. His little hangout place with him and his friends. And it's made out of, I suspect newcomers won't know, I made this myself out of packing crates. 
if you look back on the early ones, you'll see how I renovated it from the surf shack and turned it into the tackle shack that it is now much loved by many. And check the view. A monk jack, I was filming here yesterday, a monk jack deer came right along the edge of the fence. All I had was this camera, which is not much good for getting a close up. We went all the way along the edge and around the perimeter there. And we do get other, too many people walking now because of lockdown. Um, they go out there and do their one hour's exercise. I'm one of them, but I don't go out the front here. I go the opposite direction to the people. And uh, across there, we get the deer coming up the woods. I think I tune that fire down a touch and finish this soup. Right, I feel these are as close to done. It's been, they say cook it on 175, it's been sort of 200 ish. So, I have indeed got the disgorgers. In short, piping hot. Before, ah, they are piping hot, yeah. Oh, there's a little chappy nestling there. Come here, young one. Oh, he's, he's been... <laughs> that one that was nestling that fell out of the uh, silver paper, obviously, has been cremated. That gets so hot, that oven. You, 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 it's hard, you'd be hard pushed to think a little oven, little stove like that would cook me, but indeed it has. Look, they are steaming. You can't see it here, but they're steaming, falling to pieces. I have to say this lockdown does get you more thinking about food. It just seems to be thinking about food. Everything seems to be an event, doesn't it? You have to make an event of everything, even this. That looks almost good enough to eat. Oh man, that was really tasty. Somewhat warm. It is fabulous here today. Could be shark fishing, conger eel fishing. Beach fishing might be a bit tough, you know, in the bright weather off the beaches. Unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to hit the lawns again. Probably 10 days, couple of weeks, but it's starting to grow and look, <laughs> we've all got nowhere else to go, we've got nothing else. I think everybody's garden is going to be immaculate this year. I've got one other job I want to do today. And that's, I notice a lot, because we live by a road, on the edge of the country, so obviously a road goes past. So I noticed some years ago, about three or four years ago, it was like a fine grit over my boat, the yellow uh, fiberglass of the boat that I have up here. And you can run your finger on it, you can feel it's like grit. And I wonder, they, I think they're diesel particulates or petrocarbons or PCBs. I don't know how small a PCB has to be, but this is like a, a carbonized grit. Very, very, very fine. I'd love to get it tested somewhere to see exactly what it is. If it is carbon, ooh, I'm gonna have to move. But it's got worse, I've noticed it's got worse. It's all over my garage on the door. I've got a, a, a white garage door, so it stands out. So I'm gonna be washing that together with the guttering. And after that, it's going to be, how many more jobs can you find, Graham? At the moment, oh, it's just nice to be out, isn't it? Well, when I say out, in. I hope all you guys are not getting too fed up or bored with the little vlogs, the little video logs I put up, but people did ask for them, so I've got nothing else to do. I can do one fishing one a week. I've got enough to go quite a long time. So you guys, all the fishermen out there, we go, yes, get in. Um, so what a good job, what a good job I stockpiled. Obviously, I had no idea this would be coming along. Awful, awful virus, sick of it. I think it's a, the lockdown is the fact you can't go out and you sort of want to go out because you've been told you can't. It's like a child, isn't it? You want to go out because you're told you can't. But then so many people are losing their lives all around the world. You have to think to yourself, it's a risk, buddy. It really is a risk. And listen, we hope... I think this year's totally done. 
but we hope there'll be another year and we can get out fishing, gardening, enjoying life in general, because let's face it, I don't think anybody's enjoying anything live at the moment, although it does give you a different view of, of, of what we call nature in a way. You start noticing more birds, you start listening, because there's no jet streams ripping up the sky and polluting all the sky with the white trails. It's lovely and lovely and quiet for filming. The roads are less busy. I've noticed the animals seem more active, maybe less insects. There are, to me, less insects around. So we breed more and then put more pressure on the planet. It's a vicious circle. I mean, I'm looking at birds now up the tree and I think, well, they never used to be there before like that. But the one I like seeing is Colin. Definitely, that's him. he's so majestic when he comes over. And his family, Colin brings his family in. And there's what, three of them? But three of them are allowed to go around in threes as long as they're family. Oh, it's almost, you get to the stage where I'm thinking, hang on Graham, if you're not careful, you're actually at 68, you're going to relax if you're not careful. And it sort of worries me that, am I relaxing and sitting by my tackle shack? Like an old boy sitting there in a rocking chair with a pipe and that, you just musing on all the fish I used to catch years ago. I'd like to muse on some ones I want to catch in the future. Not quite yet ready for the wooden overcoat. Right guys, enough sitting around, you see what I'm like? <laughs> enough sitting around, let's hit that garage door and show you my particulates. So, just looking at the door, you probably can't see that just that, those sort of run marks but when you run your fingers over them it's like a very very fine you think it's a dust but I wonder if it is because you can see it way down here and the reason I say that is I'm all gravel here I'm all gravel right there is no mud to come up here there's nothing to splash up here so that has got to have come off I feel the air itself there look see that it's like a grit. Now this is a powder coated door, so I don't want to use any um, abrasives on that at all. So it's sprayed like that. All I'm using is here, a bucket of soapy water, a sponge down there for obviously doing my lights, and a soft brush. I actually wash the cars with this sometimes, very soft broom. It's much easier to go up and down. And of course, a hop up to reach these, which I've left, yes, inside the garage. It still looks a bit like a bomb site. Even on top of this, it's there. See, I can feel it with my finger. When you do this lightly, it's very difficult to describe. Now hopefully you'll be able to see the difference between the two there. It's all cleaned off because it's nice powder coated, but you should be able to see just there, it's this greasy type of grit to it. And I'm pretty sure that they just call it, look, traffic dirt. If I had a load of soil in the garden, fine, but it's, it's a gritty one. Anyway, let's, let's work away, finish this off. The wife is going to be so pleased with this. And of course, when everybody goes back to work again, I'll get even more uh, pollutive particles over my garage door. So just think about all those funny little grainy particulates or whatever they are, PCBs, petrocarbons. I've got the feeling that's what they're, diesel particulates. 
I may be wrong. Do you get them, you know, in cities more on cars? Or you car cleaning guys out there? Have you noticed it? It's not just like a dust. I don't live in the Sahara Desert. I've seen the Sahara dust. We've had that when you get the winds bring the Sahara dust over on the jet streams and stuff. I've had that sort of reddish tinge to it. This one's different. Anyway, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Not Fishing Show, the Totally Awesome Job Show. Hopefully we get out soon. We'll see you guys in the next one. It's either going to be a lockdown film, if we're still locked up, or Friday's fishing film, Deferini. We'll see you next time. Yeah.